Hey everybody, this video is going to be all about the new Sony VPL-XW7000 front projector. We have been huge fans of Sony video products for decades at Audio Advice. Year after year, they introduce new technology to move the state of the art in performance forward. We feel like their deep involvement in the film industry is one reason why they are so driven to produce such great gear. You may not know it, but Sony video cameras probably captured the images for your favorite movie. Then it was likely edited using Sony post-production equipment, and you may have seen it in your local theater on a Sony professional projector. Every couple of years, Sony will take what their engineers have learned and update their front projection lineup. When we found out they had new models coming in the middle of 2022, we could not wait to see them for ourselves. Then when Sony told us if we signed some NDAs and swore ourselves to secrecy, we could see them weeks before their formal announcement, and even better, keep them for a few days to test. We were just jumping with excitement. I think the VPL XW7000 I cover in this overview will probably become the choice for people doing front projection theaters with larger screen sizes. Now, one big advantage Sony has over other manufacturers of front projectors is the fact that they manufacture several multi-hundred thousand dollar front projectors that are used from concert venues to flight simulation to large commercial cinemas. The knowledge they gain in pushing the state of the art eventually filters down into the more affordable models. In 2021, they did this at the top of their home theater projector line with the introduction of the GTZ 380, a new projector that was a cross between commercial projector and a residential home theater model. It could put out an amazing 10,000 lumens and has a lot of new technology for the contrast demands HDR puts on a home theater. The new XW7000 shares a lot of the advancements developed into GTZ 380 at almost one fourth of the cost. Now we know purchasing something like the XW7000 is not trivial for anyone and you wanna be sure you get the best support. If you do purchase a Sony projector from Audio Advice, just know we are here to help you with some of the best tech support in the industry. We can use video chat and remote access to help you dial things in for the best performance. Or if you live within our installation region, we have full installation support as well. Uh, audio advice, ever since the first laser-based front projectors came up, we have loved the whole concept. To our eyes, the colors on a laser light engine just seem to have more pop than a lamp type projector. Another tremendous difference is the lifespan of the laser engine compared to a lamp. The laser light engine on the XW7000 is rated at 20,000 hours, which is a movie every single day for the next 27 years. Laser light engines also have the ability to give us more light output, which can make a big difference in the realism of the image you see on larger projection screens. The new XW7000 can produce a whopping 3200 lumens, but there is more to a great picture than a high lumen spec. Sony front projectors use three small panels to cover the red, blue, and green spectrum all projectors need to create an image. They developed their Silicon X-Tail Reflective Display, or SXRD for short, many years ago. These panels have always looked fantastic to us with a lot of depth and a very smooth, lifelike image. When Sony was designing the GTZ 380, they came up with a way to improve their 4K panels they had been using for years. The XW7000 actually gets an even newer panel made specifically for the new series. These use three 0.61 inch native 4K panels. The new panel has a flatter reflective surface and 10% more light reflectance than the previous ones. Light resistance was improved by 50%. The benefit of these updates is an improvement in contrast and brightness, both which are critical components when you have an HDR signal. The XW7000 also has a new optical system with what Sony calls wide dynamic range optics. In any three panel system, you have to arrange the panels with mirrors and the laser diodes to produce an image. Sony found a way to better position them closer together than in the past to give better light control and to get the most out of the laser light engine. They also came up with a new laser cooling system to get more output from the laser. Just like the new SXRD panels, this new optical system improves both contrast and brightness. Now, in the world of video, one of the most important parts of the chains is the video processor. If you have ever seen a cheap TV with jagged edges and things jumping all around or oversaturated or dull colors, you have seen how bad a video processor can ruin a picture. At Audio Advice, we believe there is no question that Sony produces the best video processors available. By being so deeply involved in the film industry, they gain a lot of knowledge and have built up a huge reference library of images to use as their 
processors are making millions of adjustments to deliver the best picture possible. And their engineers are always pushing for better performance as they came up with a better design every couple of years using better algorithms and taking advantage of faster processing speeds. When the GTZ 380 was introduced, it had a new processor specifically designed for front projectors called the X1 Ultimate for projectors. And you guessed it, the XW7000 gets that exact same processor. The X1 Ultimate for projector processor provides improved clarity, expanded dynamic range, and even larger volume of colors. How they do this is pretty cool as it comes down from their experience in the film industry. There are two databases of reference images built into the processor that looks at it for upscaling and noise reduction. That's all happening incredibly fast as each frame is analyzed and then processed to improve the clarity of the picture. Concurrently, the processor is looking for dark parts of the image and finding the best way to enhance their detail with their digital contrast enhancer. This process gives deep blacks where you can still see details in the object. If you are in the market for a projector like the XW7000, you probably know a bit about HDR or high dynamic range. This was introduced a few years ago in the TV world for better contrast and more colors. The catch was HDR worked best on a TV capable of thousands of nits. Front projectors cannot deliver anywhere near that much light output. Technology came to the rescue and quickly, we now can enjoy all the benefits of HDR on the big screen. Sony's tech for HDR is their dynamic HDR enhancer. This looks at each and every frame to produce the best contrast while keeping detail and clarity so you can see the subtle details and darker parts of the picture. Think of seeing the hairs on a black mohair jacket. The dynamic HDR enhancer even adjusts the output level of the laser to change as needed for the best contrast. They give you some options for the level at which this part works, which is really great as you want it working at its maximum for very large screens and at its minimum for smaller screens. The X1 Ultimate for projectors is also running the Sony object-based HDR remastering process. It is looking for individual objects in a scene and adjusting the contrast on a more granular level to add texture and depth. However, based on our tests, we find that it is critical to adjust some key settings in the object-based HDR remastering process differently than they come default. We do this ourselves for installation customers and we send out our best practices setup guide to those who purchase from us online. If you get these settings right, these two processes produce an HDR picture that is just absolutely stunning. And the best news is they work even better on the new and improved video processor. Now, Sony projectors have had their great color system called Triluminos for a few years now, which increases the variety of colors the projector could reproduce. The GTZ 380 was their first projector to get the updated Triluminos Pro, which increased the color palette to a billion possible variations of color. And yes, you guessed it, the new model gets Triluminos Pro too. The XW7000 also adds another color enhancement technology, which is not present in any of the other models, called Live Color Enhancer. It is a new algorithm to give more vivid colors when the entire field is very bright. All right, boy, this has been a lot of new tech, but we do have one more piece to go over. For 2022, Sony designed a new lens for the XW6000 and 7000 called their ACF lens. As you may know, Sony knows a lot about lenses with all of their involvement in professional video and photography. If you are into photography, you know how important the lens is. The new ACF lens has a 70 millimeter spherical primary lens with 13 glass elements behind it. Many projectors use a spherical lens, but that type of lens adds distortion around the edges. The Sony lens has minimal dis edge distortion. Sony has been using this type of lens for years. However, what is new is what they did to the internal lenses. Every projector has multiple lenses behind the primary lens. To zoom the image, most projectors just move one of these groups as you zoom for different screen sizes. Sony designed a system that works with the electronic zoom that has a floating group that actually moves when you zoom in to reduce any edge distortion caused by zooming. They also found the laser could have some color deviation as you change the zoom. They found an extra low dispersion glass, which is positioned closest to the light engine, eliminates the deviation, which is also part of the new ACF lens system. When we first saw the 7000 on a 150 inch widescreen, everyone in the room was just in awe. The super high output coupled with all the great new tech 
was producing an image that was just stunning. We played many colorful scenes in HDR from the latest Aladdin movie, and we are all just blown away from the picture. Like the XW6000, the 7000 does give you several memory presets, so you can have that immersive widescreen experience in your home. There is just nothing like a wall-to-wall -wall picture, and now with the light output of the XW7000, your screen can be extremely large, and you'll get a brilliant picture. If you're unfamiliar with how widescreen works, and its benefits, we have a great article and video that we'll link in the description. Gamers will also appreciate the improvements to the gaming mode preset on XW7000. Input lag is down to 21 milliseconds at 4K 60p and just 13 milliseconds at HD 120p. That's really great. So we've got a new laser light engine that can produce 3200 lumens, the same amazing video processor from the GTZ 380, a brand new SXRD panel system with better contrast, an improved optical system, enhanced HDR processing, color improvements with Triluminos Pro and Live Color, a new high-tech lens system. Wow, you can see why we think the XW7000 is just so good. As part of our evaluation, we wanted to check out how even the light output was from the shortest to the longest end of the throw range. For those of you new to the front projection, for every screen size, there's a range of distances the projector can be back from the screen. Your projector will have a spec for short and long you multiply by your screen width. This gets a little more complex for widescreen, but don't worry. If you're trying to figure out for your system, just give us a call or chat with us at audioadvice.com. We'd be happy to help you figure out what's best for you. We test many brands of projectors and have found that most projectors have a pretty big drop off in light output as you get towards the longest end of the throw range. Some as much as 50% with 40% being pretty average. We've always liked the fact that Sony projectors have less of a variation allowing you a little bit more flexibility. So we got out our lux meter and took measurements on a white field. We found there's only to be a 22% change, which is fantastic and speaks to how great the Sony optical system is working in this new projector. This brings up a key point. When evaluating projectors, you can't just look at the stated lumens and have an apples to apples comparison. The stated lumens are generally the theoretical maximum of the projector, but once you set the colors correctly and adjust zoom for your throw distance, the numbers can change a lot. In this case of the Sony, just like their televisions, their stated numbers were way more representative of what you should expect in the field compared to cheaper projectors. And this is certainly the case for the XW7000. We had also noticed that during our testing, the XW7000 ran really quiet, and so we wanted to know just how quiet it was. We positioned a microphone right at the mouth of the fan's output and measured 58 dB. At three feet away, it dropped all the way down to 36 dB, and at six feet away, it was almost less than the noise floor of the room at 33 dB. Those are some really low numbers. The other thing to bear in mind is that Sony is on average smaller and lighter than other projectors in this price and category performance. So in general, it's more advantageous from an aesthetic and background noise perspective than the competition. So we were curious to see how the new ACF lens did against a much more expensive lens in a Sony projector. So we did an A-B testing with a group of people watching bit-perfect 4K video coming from a cladoscape, and none were able to consistently identify the difference in the motion or edge distortion against the $45,000 Sony VPL VW1025 projector. Only when we put up the detailed static test pattern and stood close to the screen could we see the reduced edge distortion from the 1025 projector, which has an incredibly expensive high performance all glass lens. Of note is that the VW7000 has 3200 lumens versus 2200 lumens for the 1025 and actually has less light reduction from the center to the edges. So for 99% of the viewers, the 7000 is delivering uniform clarity that is performing well above its class. And like our testing of the two other models, the processor in the new VW7000 does a better job upscaling non-4K content. The VPL XW7000 brings a whole new level of light output and high performance video processing to this price category. It is by no means inexpensive, but when you add up everything it offers, we feel it is going to be an outstanding choice for large widescreen theaters and media rooms that you could use extra horsepower in. Plus, the picture it produces is just incredible, and it will make even the most picky video file very, very happy. Now, we do have reviews on the XW6000 and the XW5000, so if you'd like to watch those overviews, click the link in the description to watch those. 
and thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, hit the subscribe button and the notification bells to be sure that you don't miss any of the content. It really helps a lot more than you think. Also, check out the playlist section of our channel to find any content you may be looking for. If you have questions, feel free to give us a call, chat with us on audioadvice.com, or stop by one of our award-winning showrooms and we'd be happy to help you out. If you are designing your home theater or media room, check out our home theater designer tool on our website, where we also have inspiration galleries, design guides and installation guides and anything home theater you may be looking for. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.